Hey everybody, this is Janice Wright from the Garrison Public Affairs Office and today we are here with a representative from the United Service Organizations here at Fort Cavazos and they're here to talk to you guys about all the great things the USO does and how you can join that effort. All that and more on this week's episode of the Great Big Podcast. Hey everyone, we're here with the manager of the Fort Cavazos USO, Ben Griffin, and he's going to talk to us and tell us all about how the USO supports quality of life and all the great things here at The Great Place. So welcome, Mr. Griffin. Thank you so much. It is my absolute pleasure to be here today. So you just mentioned uh, supporting the quality of life of our service members. Uh, As of earlier this year, we have a new mission statement, and we're real excited to share that with you all. It is now to strengthen the well-being of the people serving in America's military and their families. Absolutely, and that pretty that really sums up what you guys do. So tell us about some of the resources and activities and events that you guys do here. All right, so the USO, for lack of a better word, is the happy place. We're where the service members and the family members can come and relax. Our big nexus of operations is our center, located right across from the TJ Mills Food Court. So what do we have there? Pretty much Everything. We have a movie theater that shows movies yes. during the day. We have a video game area. We serve a hot lunch Monday through Friday. At while supplies last from 12 to 1 o'clock. Wednesdays is pizza day. I believe today is some sort of nacho variation of that. We have sponsors like Chick-fil-A that will do lunch. Wow. We have Big Hoss Barbecue. We have Texas Roadhouse. And we have H-E-B Sandwiches. So there's a lot to offer at the USO, and that's just the tip of the iceberg. Wow, so you keep soldiers and their family members fed and entertained. That's the idea. I love that. Keep them happy. So what other organizations do you partner with to make that happen? So right now we've got, like I said, uh, Chick-fil-A, Big House Barbecue. Um, One of the localized organizations is the the Calvary Housing. Okay. Um, We are actually going to be setting up an event with them coming up later in the month of April. I love it. It's our Earth Fest. And Earth Fest is also being combined with the month of the military child. Nice. Nice. So tell us a little bit more about what you have in store. All right. So for Earth Fest, we're going to provide a backdrop and we're going to be handing out the solar glasses. So that way the family members and the service members that come to our lovely, lovely EarthFest event that's going to be at the Bronco Youth Center on the 5th of April, come by the USO table and we will have those lovely glasses that were provided by one of our partners at CTC at Central Texas College. Okay. I actually used to work at CTC. Uh, Shout out to Central Texas College here at the Great Big Podcast. We love them there. (laughs) We do. We do. So, um... I was just curious to know about the origins of the USO. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Okay, so the USO came together with six or seven other partner organizations as a result of World War II. What happened was the service members were going abroad. They didn't really have anywhere to kick off their feet or be entertained or have fun. What started off with coffee, donuts, dancing partners has completely transformed into what the USO is today. Again, we're the happy place. And as a matter of fact, located over there at our building, known as the Rivers Building, Mm -hmm. that was the very first USO to ever operate specifically on a military installation with a permanent status. Oh, wow. So we're kind of pioneers. We are definitely pioneers. And we have the largest USO in the world right now. Oh, I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. We are the great place after all. That is right. So I have taken many tours and have covered many uh, activities and events. And the last time I took a tour, I was really, really, you know, pleased and and excited to see the computer lab, the gaming room. Tell us a little bit more about those things. All right. We have 30 laptop computers. They're not on the military network, but they are on the public Wi-Fi for folks to come in, soldiers, service members, families, uh, to basically use, print up the documents they need, maybe take a class while they're needing that for their unit, or just simply print up those vacation documents, absolutely, tax papers, whatever yes. they need to get on their way. Just another resource they can use in addition to the library. Exactly right. Our gaming area, we have Xbox Series Xs, we have PS5, some of the older systems too. We host gaming tournaments, or you can just simply drop by, play a play somebody in FIFA or maybe Madden nice. or whatever tickles your fancy. Uh, you do got to be 18 to be back there because we have some of the more mature games. Of course. But it is just an opportunity for the folks to come in, play those lovely video games, and have fun. The gaming is really popular right. right now. We are all in on the gaming. 
And of course, if you're nostalgic like myself, you do have the old school games like Candyland and checkers and chess. And of course, I love to shoot pool. And you guys got plenty of pool tables to enjoy. That's a great segue. Every second Thursday of the month, we've been offering family game night. Mm. It's a registration event. You have to go to our sign-up page on our Facebook and our website. But yes, that's a time to put the cell phones down. Absolutely. The families come in and play Candyland, checkers. We have a really big Connect Four and then we also offer pizza, some snacks, and just a chance for the families to relax. And we have our special guests, our therapy dogs, come in. I love the therapy love. dogs. Exactly. Yes. It's, it's a great opportunity. So you guys keep a calendar full of events and activities. Tell us about some of your more popular ones. Well, um, the lunches are very popular. For every lunch day, we have a different event. Mondays is our therapy dog day. Tuesday's bingo. Wednesday's trivia. Thursday's our mystery of it, and Friday we have some other therapy doggies that come by. And all these things can be found on our website or our Facebook page. Just type in Fort USO Fort Cavazos in the search. They'll pop right up. Okay, great, great, great. So I know that um, at the core of the USO are its volunteers, the people that keep it going, the people that make it flourish. Tell us a little bit about how important that is. Volunteers are the ambassadors of the USO. They make things happen. So when you walk into any USO around the world, you're going to see a volunteer there. They're going to welcome you with open arms, and they're going to show you or direct you where the action takes place. We could not do what it is we do at the USO without our volunteers because they are, like I said, they're the backbone of what we do. They're the ones that take the time and come in to provide the services, the smile, the, the happy experience for our service members and their families. Okay. Okay, so if someone wanted to volunteer, how would they go about that? And what are some of the things that they could actually do? Well, first off, we offer a volunteer orientation every second and fourth Tuesday of the month from 1800 to 1900, 6 p.m. to 7 p.m., right at our USO. This is a chance for us to see if we're a right fit for you. Uh, we'll talk about our mission, our core values, but more importantly, what it is we do to provide that service to our family members and the, and the service members at the USO. What do they do? Everything. Everything from handing out maybe a soda, some chips, um, helping us with our big events. We have our scavenger hunt coming up. Mm -hmm. We have our serving our lunch during the day. Nice. Coffee connections for the spouses. Uh, on National Pretzel Day, it'll be the volunteers that are actually handing out those pretzels. Nice. And they're also there in case a service member might want to play a game of checkers or pool. They can join right in and get the ball rolling. Okay. All right, so I also know that um, some of the soldiers here volunteer. Uh, how, is, how does that go, as ha having the single soldiers volunteer helping their peers? Well, the best advertisement campaign we could ever have at the USO for volunteering is from our service members because they're the ones that receive the services and they bring in their friends to both use the USO and possibly volunteer. There is a volunteer service ribbon that is available for the service members that come and volunteer at the USO. That particular amount of hours is set by the command. But yes, we have uh, soldiers that volunteer on a regular basis. They can't really do it from the nine to five schedule because that whole army thing gets in the way mm. for the most part. But come uh, the later hours and on the weekends, that makes up pretty much the majority of our volunteer force for the for the USO. It's the soldiers serving. Right. And why is that spirit of uh, you know wanting to give your time and effort to help others, why is that so integral to keeping um, the USO a successful organization? Well, the USO can't do what it does without volunteers. We have been a volunteer service organization since the beginning, and we go where the military allows us to go. The USO right. gets to operate on the FOBs overseas, um, right here at Fort Cavazos. Mm -hmm. and we maintain that great relationship in large part due to our volunteers. So it's important because we can't provide the services and the, the things that we do without having the, the human touch, that mm -hmm. interaction from person to person when they walk in the center to just be welcomed to have that seat in that comfy chair, to hand over that soda. It sounds like small right. things, but those small things add up. Right. So you mentioned some of the special things that the USO does for families, but I know you also do cater to the single soldiers. Uh, one of the things that I uh, reported on was the Super Bowl party you guys uh, provided, you know, pizza and everything. You kind of brought the Super Bowl to the single soldiers here. So how important is that to provide that morale boost to them? It's very important. I mean, Unless you've been in the military directly, you don't know how things really operate. And every little thing that, that I've ever been a part of or could do for a service member to brighten up his or her day, to make them feel 
welcome, to make them feel wanted, or just to take their mind off of the normal day-to-day, whatever it is they're doing uh, in the military. It does matter. And if we can be a part of that, it makes all the difference. Okay. So you guys do a lot of great things on the installation. What about some of the things you do outside in the community? Well, the USO has a congressional uh, charter for active duty service members and families specifically. So when we do things outside of the, the gate, as it were, it's more so at the places to where service members uh, already gather, like depots or places like uh, Fort Mabry, or Camp Mabry, excuse me. Um, not so much in the community as, as per se, but it's uh, definitely uh, within the wheelhouse of our footprint on the installations. Okay. And I think that us being a pioneer and also being one of the largest, we kind of set an example for other USO organizations uh, to follow. So why don't you speak a little bit to that? Well, I certainly hope so. Um, We have the Pathfinder program over here at uh, USO, uh, and it's basically designed for service members that are separating from the military into the civilian world or for spouses seeking employment. We were one of the pioneer organizations for the USO to actually have that program, and it's flourished quite extensively. There's not a time you will not see somebody waiting at the USO to be helped with those additional services where a Pathfinder transition specialist will talk with a service member or spouse individually. They get that one-on-one service to make sure they are properly set up, for lack of a better word, when they reach life in the civilian world. Okay. And as we all know, quality of life, uh, you know, maintaining that high quality of life is very, very important here at The Great Place. And how do you think the USO plays into that? Well, I hope we do a good job. I hope when people walk into the USO, they are going to get that quality experience. That was our big mantra for this year, for 2024, quality of the experience, both to my staff and for the volunteers, to make sure that when folks walk in, they can expect that homey feel and an experience, something that they can take with them and hopefully have for a very long time to think, wow, when I was there at Fort Cavazos for that moment in my military life, the USO was there for us. We were... We were there so that they could forget about life for a while, come into the USO, relax, have fun, and enjoy some meaningful experiences. Yes. You know, of course, I you know, I travel, and I'm also a veteran. So when I'm at the airports that actually have a USO on site, I'm really, you know, comforted, and I'm really, you know, grateful for that because you can go in there, and it's very comfortable, and they have snacks, and you can, you know, wait out, especially if you have a long delay. So the USO, you know, they, they touch so many aspects of people's lives, and it's just a great thing to have here at The Great Place. And thank you so much for your service. Thank you. Thank you. So I have a bunch of USO activities and events that kind of stand out of my mind. What What's, which one stands out in your mind as one of your favorites or one that's, you know, really, really, you know, impactful? Well, one of my favorite ones that we have done the last several years has been our USO Kids Scavenger Hunt. Okay. So it started off during the COVID time to where we put together a bunch of places, puzzles, and things for folks to get to know this insulation by going out to West Fort Cavazos. Okay, I love that. Or, uh, um, three Core, right there where the statue is, so they can learn about the insulation. And as a family, as a group, they take the time to do the scavenger hunt. It's like 20 questions where they have to physically be seen there with a photo. Or one time I had them do a joke um, in front of like the, the, the Sentinel where they read the paper. They'll read the headline too. Mm. Or Jackie Robinson was stationed here while he was in the military. I had them go to I baseball love field, that. steal the bases like he used to do. And they had to film them doing that. So that's been one of the more impactful uh programs that I've actually done because it got people to understand and know the installation. I love that. Also as a family, get to enjoy this experience and have their names put into a, uh, a raffle to win a big prize that, and we actually have that particular event coming up again. It's going to be over Easter Sunday. Okay. Uh, So the Thursday leading into Easter, we're going to have our big scavenger hunt and that'll be again, an opportunity for them to get to enjoy that. That sounds really, really fun and really, really creative. You know, um, the, the great place is such a, a, a historic place, and it's got all kind of people, who not, notables, who, who came here and served here. So to have the USO tied into that, that's pretty awesome. So a couple of my favorite events that I've covered have been um, definitely the Spouse Spa Day where you guys cater to the spouses and they got their nails done and their eyelashes and you guys had the food from H-E-B and they did the candle making. That to me speaks to, you know, how the great place cares and supports its military families and how they cater to the military families and quality of life. So, and I also liked, um, I liked the car show. 
Yeah, the car show is pretty good. I'm not a big car person, but I enjoyed seeing all of the beautiful, beautiful cars and everybody taking pride in them and coming out and showing them out and the USO providing a platform for them to do so. That was also one of my favorite ones. Um, we got to have Mr. Gordon Logan, who is the former CEO yes. of Sport Clips. His car was beautiful, yeah. and it's yes. it's rare. It's a, He is a rare Corvette that is just top notch. It's cherry, it's boss, whatever word you it want is. to It is. It is beautiful. It fit right nicely with some of these other cars. Mm-hmm. Uh, we had some of the more modern vehicles. Absolutely. Cars. We even had motorcycles that were there on display. Yes. But I, I think Mr. Logan's Corvette was just... It was. It was. I think it won best in show. Well, I sure believe it did. It, did. it yeah. was beautiful. It was, you know, pristine. I was, I was, I was just like amazed looking at it. So before we wrap up, we want to reiterate the importance of volunteers to the USO. So uh, let's let our listeners know one more time uh, what they can do and how they can sign up to become volunteers. Well, if you want to be a volunteer at the USO, um, again, go to our website, uh, volunteers.uso.org, and you can sign up directly or simply come by the USO. We'll talk to you about that. Uh, if you look, click on our regular USO Fort Cavazos website, the information is there. But above all, we have our orientations every second and fourth Tuesday of the month from 1800 to 1900, 6 p.m. to 7 for about an hour. That will include our mission statement, everything that we offer for the service members and their families, a tour, and ultimately to see if we are a right fit for you. Excellent, excellent. And of course, you know, there's so many different activities and events. There's something for everyone. So let the listeners know again what they can do to look up the calendar and see what's going on so they don't miss anything. All you need to do is go to our website or our Facebook page, type in USO Fort Cavazos. All of our events are posted. We've just got the new set coming out this week. Um, again, Monday through Friday, we do the, the lunches for the active duty service members and the families. And if you're a volunteer, you are a little privy to some of these events a little farther out because the shifts coverage is needed to be there and Above all, what I tell every person that is a volunteer at the USO, if you are a family member of an active duty service member or a soldier or airman stationed here, come to the event. We would love you to volunteer, but we would really like it if you came by the USO to partake in that coffee okay. event, the pool tournament, right. having lunch with us, coming to family game night. We're here for you, and I just want you to know that come to our events. Okay. Is that the stipulation to utilize the resources at the USO? You have to have um, a DOD ID card or be a... You have to be active duty or a dependent of an active duty service member. Okay. Good, good, good. Well, with that, we are so, so grateful that you were able to come on. And we are so grateful to have the USO here at Fort Cavazos to serve our soldiers and their families. So thank you so much. Thank you so much. When new soldiers are assigned to your unit, get to know them. Show them around. The exchange, health clinic, fitness center, whatever. Encourage your soldiers to grab meals together and talk about their lives. Shared hardships and life experiences build cohesive teams with fewer instances of suicide, sexual assault, and drug abuse. And units that are ready for the fight. Hey guys, this is Darren with the Garrison Public Affairs Office, and Janice, I'm really sad I missed out on the USO meetup the other day. They do so much stuff uh, for not only Fort Cavazos, but uh, for the entire military community. You are absolutely right. Now, I have uh, covered several events with USO, and Ben is always over there promoting, and he's always got something great going on. So they do a lot to uh, support quality of life and make sure that soldiers and military families are enjoying themselves here, and they have support and plenty of resources and apparently plenty of food. Yeah, I mean, uh, last time I was at the Newcomers Brief, they had Chick-fil-A, and you guys are out there listening. They always post uh, what they're going to be serving for lunch that day, so yes. keep, uh, keep it on USO social media. Yes, if you go, you can actually see a calendar of all their events and what they've got going on so you can plan in advance of what you want to attend with your family or if you want to attend alone. 
Yeah, I still got to get down there because after we did that podcast with Colonel Foster, you said they have that music room. So I got to go check that out. Maybe yes, shred on the guitar for do. a little bit. They also have an excellent gaming room. If you are a gamer, check out the USO. I think you'd be uh, pleased. And if, of course, if you're a nostalgic gamer like myself and you like Candyland and all of the old school games, they have those as well. They actually do have game nights, too, for families. So. Yeah, they got a whole, they got tournaments. They just got regular old game nights. And I mean, it's uh it's that's pretty cool stuff. Yes. They, they get uh, an opportunity to showcase what the USO does and what it's been doing for, uh, you know, since really World War Two. Yes, the the USO is definitely a gem here at the Great Place. Well, uh, what what do we got in the what do we got in the news this week, uh, Janice? And what's what's going on uh, on the installation? Well, of course, you know, there's always plenty of things going on at the Great Place. But um, right now, we are asking for our viewers to weigh in um, on the housing we, ha- we offer here. With that, we have a tenant satisfaction survey. So this important Army directed survey is available now through April 18th. The feedback is important for both the Army and Calvary Family Housing to improve the resident experience as these results are used to develop action plans for improvement in the installation communities. The completely confidential survey will be emailed from Army Housing Survey at CELAssociates.com. For additional questions, you can contact Calvary Family Housing at 254-287-4212. Yeah, it's a, it's a very important survey because a lot of these uh, surveys lead to tangible, you know, updates to what, you know, Army Housing does across the force, not just here at Fort Cavazos, but across the force. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, uh, they don't know, you know, what we need unless we, you know, make our voices and our concerns heard. And this survey is an excellent way to do that. That's right. Yeah. And then uh, let's not forget, Ben Hogan Classic is coming, and it's gonna oh. be it's gonna be hitting hard. Uh, so active duty soldiers can register for the Ben Hogan Classic at 11 a.m. Next Thursday at the courses yes. at Clear Creek until all spots are filled. And like you heard before, you got to line up early because, I mean, right as soon as the sun comes up, <laughs> people are lining up, getting ready to go uh, sign up to play golf. The golf scramble is conducted in three-person teams, and the date of play will be April 26th. So, again, registration is this month, but the actual tournament will not be until April 26th. Uh, so, so, Darren, do you play golf? I do. You know, uh, I uh, grew up in the Coachella Valley, which is known for golf. Uh, you know, I played high school uh, varsity golf, and then I went to college, and then I, you know, b- playing in golf in Los Angeles is completely different than playing golf in my hometown because it's a little pricier in, in L.A. County to play golf. So I ended up uh, doing ROTC and working for the police department instead. So I, I didn't really have a lot of time for golf when I went to college. So, But I'm I do ju- play now still. You I'm know? just going to be honest. I suck. I went to Top Golf and I thought it was going to be easy. And I swear to God, I must have swung the, the, the club like 50, 11 times <laughs> to hit the ball. And I still didn't hit it. And once I got, you know, the hang of it a little bit, I didn't hit it very far. And yeah. my wrist was sore afterwards. So the, that let me know that I wasn't doing something right. Yeah. Something. Hey, you know, but hey, that's why there's golf carts, Janice, because everyone yeah. enjoys <laughs> driving the golf cart. <laughs> now, I will do putt-putt golf. I really do love that. That's fun, too. Also going on, we have a, in honor of Brain Injury Awareness Month this month, we have an uh, Intrepid Spirit Center's open house event. So the Fort Cavazos Intrepid Spirit Center will be hosting its annual open house from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. on Friday. All Fort Cavazos and community leaders, beneficiaries, and current or prior patients are invited to come see its model of care and the value it provides to its patients, um, the Defense Health Agency, and the surrounding community. So that would be interesting, you know, to come out for that. Absolutely, and that's uh, uh, one heck of a cause in terms of, uh, obviously, we see a lot of TBI in military service, yes. uh, even uh, not in combat-related incidents, whether it's a concussion or absolutely, uh, you know, even on your free time. So it's uh, very important to actually understand what uh, resources are available for those yeah. that, that suffer from these afflictions. Yeah, and I think people kind of, you know, underestimate the severity of it. You know, you might, you know, have had a, a more severe injury than you realize. So it's always important to give attention to that. And even if you think you might have a concussion or something like that, you should get it checked out. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, also coming up, the, the very, very uh, highly anticipated. Trying try, people are trying to come all over <laughs> from Texas and even some surrounding states to get out to Colleen to watch the solar eclipse, which will occur on April 8th. 
That is uh, really coming up quick. And Bell County anticipates the Central Texas population to double. Oh, my gosh. If not triple oh. for the April <laughs> eclipse. Because of the increase, the Director of Emergency Services recommends stocking up on household essentials such as toilet paper, paper towels, tissues, cleaning products, non-perishable foods, and over-the-counter medications. The commanding general approved placement of barriers and checkpoints in the training area for the eclipse uh, that weekend, and most of the access points will have concrete barriers blocking the roads that lead onto the installation property. Units will occupy three checkpoints in the training area on Elijah Road, North Nolan Road, and North Fort Cavazos, 28th Street, to check the identification of all drivers and uh, adult occupants trying to access the training areas. Non-contiguous housing areas will have all but three gates closed. Any driver or adult occupant without a DOD ID card or valid visitor's pass will be denied access. Additionally, during that weekend, all visitors must have a sponsor present to obtain a visitor's pass. So with that, there is plenty of opportunities to go around. I mean, we just had the planetarium uh, not too long ago. Absolutely. Uh, you know, we talked to uh, them. And, uh, they are actually coming for a podcast. It's going to mm-hmm. be coming up very, very soon. So they got some great events uh, that is going to be hosted by the Central Texas College campus at the planetarium there Absolutely. at Central Texas College. So, again, there are opportunities outside of Fort Cavazos for you to uh, essentially watch the solar eclipse. Uh, make sure you have the approved glasses. Absolutely. There are very there are a few stipulations you need to make sure if you're going to view it. You have to make sure you view safely because you could severely uh, damage your vision, your cornea, your, uh, your sight if you're not careful. That's right. And even cameras... Uh, if you have a Equipment, telescope, yes. anything, mm-hmm. if you don't have a lens that appropriately covers uh, that respective lens, uh, you're going to damage your equipment. Yes. Uh, and it's even more so worse to damage your eyes, but you also don't want to damage your brand new iPhone 15 or your very, Absolutely. very expensive camera either. We understand this is going to be, you know, pretty much a, a really epic event, but we also want to make sure our listeners enjoy it safely. And speaking of the Planetarium podcast, uh, I told you it was going to be released soon. It actually is going to be released on the 25th on this upcoming Monday. And yes, you heard correctly. You don't have to adjust your audio dials or anything like that. The Great Big Podcast will now start to be released on Mondays, not Thursdays. Those will give you a little more time to listen to us throughout the week on your morning drive to the installation or wherever you may be listening uh, to the Great Big Podcast. We encourage you to start listening in on Mondays now. You know, speaking of getting outdoors, so, you know, Rangers from Steelhouse Hollow Lake will be at the Fort Cavazos Exchange on March 22nd from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. So you can stop by and get your America the Beautiful Military Annual Pass that opens the gates to more than 2,000 federal parks and sites. That is so awesome. Don't forget to visit Fort Cavazos MWR for more opportunities and for more adventure in uh, 2024 and the That's coming right. coming seasons to get outdoors. So a free annual military pass is available for active duty personnel and their dependents. And a free lifetime military pass is available for Gold Star families and U.S. military veterans, which uh, we are. That's right. I'm going to get my pass. <laughs> I want my pass. Any, any veteran or DOD ID card will suffice for that eligibility. And hey, I mean, some of these parks are expensive. Absolutely, you know? they are. And Absolutely. rightfully so, rightfully so, because it allows them to pay for beautifying them and, and doing what they need to do to keep these parks running. And, the, you know, again, there's over 2,000 federal parks and yes. sites around the United States. So that's a lot of money to maintain these these places. Absolutely. So whether first- you're in Yellowstone or right here at Stillhouse Hollow, you guys can get access with that America the Beautiful Pass. Yes. So make sure you go out and visit uh, the uh, main exchange this weekend and make sure you get that America the Beautiful Pass. If you do miss this weekend because you're out of town or celebrating somewhere, maybe you're out there on the federal lands already, you know, celebrating the, the beauty of the outdoors, you can visit uh, their website and also visit their ranger station at any moment in time uh, during uh, standard operating hours and actually get that America the Beautiful Pass as well. Absolutely. I foresee some some wonderful traveling soldier stories coming out of the this opportunity. How yeah, about may, you? <laughs> may, maybe we can convince Sam to send us to Yellowstone because I've never been to Yellowstone. I think I think that'd be worth it. I think you guys would want to, you'd love to hear about that trip, right? Yeah, I think uh, our, yeah, I think I think our listeners I think would valid. love it. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I think it's a valid request. I got to see Old Faithful. I'm just saying. Right. I yeah. think we should go ahead and move forward with that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sam, if you're listening, please send us to Yellowstone. <laughs> right, right. I think she'll be clamoring to make that happen. <laughs> so big plans for the weekend, Derek? 
Uh, well, actually, yeah, I'm uh, actually heading out of town for uh, this weekend and the following week. Uh, mm. Be uh, doing some veterans engagement pro- uh, projects, uh, mm-hmm. you know. So we're looking forward to doing that, uh, and then just trying to get things organized. Keep an eye on the social media and keep an eye on uh, mm-hmm. what's happening around the world because it's a busy, busy time out there. You Absolutely. Know? As you all heard in the last podcast, Erica took a little trip and he safely made it to his destination. Yes, he is in Germany. Yeah, so we're going to try to figure out how to do some cool stuff. We've been we've been teleconning a little bit to figure out how we can bring in a little bit of German flavor yes. from Germany onto the podcast. Absolutely. You know, lots of great things coming up. We got the Easter holiday, you know, we got the new season, you know, we have, you know, people cleaning out things. Of course, I'm going to be one of those who's do, who does the spring cleaning. So yeah, I'm excited. It's a new season. It's a new time, time to, you know, restart, get, you know, refresh a little bit. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. And then, uh, I don't know, it's been chilly the last few days, so we'll see what's going to happen with this weather. Because remember, it was like, in February, it was like in the 80s, and yes, now yes. it's cold again, so who knows what the spring going Who knows what we're like. going to get? Yeah. yeah, it's like a mixed bag. Maybe we'll get a snow. You, know, Mother you never know. You never know. <laughs> you know, it'll snow one day, it'll be melted in 80 degrees the next day. You just never know with Texas weather. But I've learned that. I've been here for several years, so I'm used to it now. That's right. Yeah. Well, thank you all for joining us, uh, and uh, I know I think we kind of talked a lot here, but we hope you have a great weekend. We <laughs> hope you'll get your passes. To us. <laughs> I know I think they all tune in; they like hearing us talk. And, yes. and pretty soon, we'll hopefully get that check in from Eric all the way from Germany. So yes. enjoy your weekend, and we'll talk to you guys on the next one. See you next time. Bye. This podcast is a U.S. Army Garrison Fort Cavazos and Fort Cavazos Public Affairs production. Have a question or want to share some of your wisdom with us? Drop us an email at fortcavazos, E-A-O, at gmail.com. You can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Fort Cavazos Army. And as always, be sure to leave us a review 